All right, Ronnie, you ready? Let's do it. All right, all right, man. Well, guys, I'm glad that everybody's on here. We got several people that we're going to try to get on their schedule to come in, and if they come in, that's fine. If not, we'll get this thing rolling. But we just something we talked about wanting to start out. Uh, me and Jim was sort of brainstorming about a lot of our products that we carry. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things that are good for men, uh, and I'm sure that we're probably not the only ones. I've wondered myself, uh, just like recently, I found out that, uh, you know, collagen was really good for men uh, because the joints and the bones and stuff. And I just, it helped me to be able to talk to people I know like other men uh, if I know that because I was sort of getting a weird look when I'd talk to a man and I'd say, hey, man, this collagen is great for your hair and nails. And he's like, okay. And I realized that may not be the way to talk to guys. <laughs> so it's got to be a better way uh, without, ro uh, you know, lowering the bar of the manly <laughs> the hood to go. How we talk to people about this product. And uh, <clears throat> so after uh, Rusty, I uh, shared with him and 10 minutes after him laughing about it, he decided to, all right, what we need to do is just talk more, learn more about the product. And I was talking to uh, Jim and uh, anyway, he, uh, they end up, uh, they agreed to help me with this uh, project here. And so what we want to do is put together a Zoom and uh, have it like on a Monday night, talk about products, uh, talk about issues that men are having or we're having or whatever, and then just help each other. But do it in a way that's different. Uh, uh, you know, uh, me and my wife, you know, we've been in it for, you know, a year now, and I'm seeing a lot of people coming in. I see some husbands are coming in with the wives. They're sort of in the background uh, learning a little bit about it. The wives, they're talking about these products and everything, and I'm sure I'm not the only guy going – man, I like to know what I'm talking about before I go out there and start talking. And so this is a way of us helping each other grow how we need to grow, but also uh, uh, add a little bit to it to where there might be other issues coming up. It don't matter. Uh, I want to share, uh, uh, basically what we want to do is be able to get to know each other. Uh, I've been fortunate to meet several people in uh, my life and everything. And there's one guy that I met, uh, it's funny because uh, he, he's known that he's made $3 million and he's done it three different ways. And uh, so the guy asked me, he said, ask him how he made his first million. And so I went and talked to him. I said, Mac, I said, how, how did you make your first million? He said, well, I'm going to tell you. Now, he's about four, four and, you know, four foot five. I mean, short <laughs> guy, but uh, he was a closer. I mean, he just, uh, but he, but, and he was a, Heavy drinker, okay. But <laughs> the more he drank, the more he could close. And I don't know if it just people just got tired of him and just bought it just to shut him up or whatever. But regardless, it worked. But anyway, so we was talking, and he told me he said, "Yeah, he said, uh, he said, well, he had to do a big project up in Vegas. He lived in uh, Washington. He, he met in Vegas. He worked for a company, and he was supposed to do this big project, trying to come up with something. He couldn't come up with something. He kept thinking about it, thinking about it, trying to figure out." man, I don't know. We got to come up with some, something. We're going to invent something. I, I don't know. And so after drinking all night and stuff, they wake up the next morning and he's got a hangover. So he's outside smoking a cigarette. He's licking on the ground and sees this little rock here and he picks up this rock and he's looking at it. And it's like a weird shape, you know, he didn't think nothing about it, putting it in his pocket and he goes on to his meeting. And so he's sitting there and uh, in the meeting and, you know, he seems he said, man, I just felt like, everybody was so loud and that was his hangover getting over and over. And it was, they said, well, man, you know, Matt, what do you think? It's your turn. You've been quiet. What, what do you think? He goes, well, I've got it. He goes, you do? He said, yeah. And he stood up and he reached in his pocket and he had that rock and threw that rock on the table. And he goes, my pet rock. And he's the one that invented the pet rock. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? And he said, yep. I was drunk, didn't know what it was. I looked at a rock and it looked cute. I kept it. And that was all I can remember. And I pulled it out. That's the first thing I said out of my mouth was a pet rock. And he said, and the guy just went crazy over it. They did the deal. He said, and boom, I made my first million. And I was like, wow, that is insane. So then Randy asked me, he said, go ask him how he made his second million. And I said, oh, this guy, how, how do you top that? He said the same thing. They met and they were talking about doing something. He said, then they turned around and 
they brought him to the table. They said, so what, what do you got? What, what, what are we doing? He goes, well, and he had a piece of paper, and he was trying to just diddle on something, and he couldn't figure it out. And the guy said, what are you doing? He said, well, this is a script. This is a, how to take care of the pet rock. <laughs> that was his second meeting. <laughs> and when he told me that, I'm thinking, there's no way you can be one that lucky and then come up with something that stupid. I don't know about y'all, but I had a couple of pet rocks that I bought. I had the little booklet to how to take care of the pet rock. I mean, and I'm thinking about that thinking, how stupid can this be? And then when Randy said, he goes, ask him about the, uh, the third thing. And I was thinking, oh, this is, there's no telling where this is going to go. And he said, he was in, they was in Vegas and all this stuff and had a big marketing uh, convention going on. And he was talking to some people in Vegas and they were talking about how everything was went down. I mean, there was the sales went down. Nobody was coming to Vegas. It was just bad. It was bad. And uh, all of a sudden he came up with a slogan. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> and that's all it took. And I was like, wow, you know, but I say this because you don't know who you meet and you don't know what people's capable of doing. But it's funny because when he had to deliver and he had to get something done, he made it happen. And that's what he always says about anything is when you meet him and he's talking to people and conventions and all that, he just says, sometimes you just got to go do it instead of coming up with excuses. I can't do this. I can't do that. And he said, you just got to accept. Here's what the challenge is. Here's what you got to do. And whatever it takes, go do it. If you don't have everything you need, find a way to get it done. Find people that can help you and just go do it and have it done. And uh, so uh, I was like, wow. So I just wanted to share that to make this realize who what we're doing here is is exactly that. Most of the people that's going to be on here, we do It Works, a wife or family, my wife, me and my wife. We may be individuals do it, whatever. We have products that can help us. Unbelievable. We've got testimonies. Um, we're here to make money. We're here to uh, change our life, uh, help change others. But the biggest thing is we might just be something in our life that's not part of It Works. It just might be somebody to say, hey, man, I'm going through some issues and I just, I need somebody to pray for me. We don't have to know why. We just know where, it's, you know, who we're praying for. Man, we go, I pray to God all the time. I got a list of people that I talk to. It may be somebody just say, man, I just got to bounce some things off my mind because, you know, one thing my dad told me years ago, uh, he said, when you work for yourself, you call in sick, you answer the phone. Pretty much there's your support. And so often, being an entrepreneur, people think being an entrepreneur means you're, you're by yourself. No, that's totally off. You need to be with others because you got to bounce things off the wall. And sometimes it's easy to bounce things off the wall uh, off to another man than a, than a woman. It's just the way we think. And believe you me, there's things my wife shared to me that I'm thinking, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm agree with you, but I have no idea. So I'm sure it goes both ways. And so what we're trying to do with this is just say, hey, man, it works as the company that we're, we're using. Uh, the products are unbelievable. We're here to help one another grow our business. But also, what else anybody needs? Uh, you know, uh, uh, the thing about uh, accept, uh, like, for instance, uh, uh, well, there's two words when you look at ex the word accept, and uh, you got, they spelled, they're spelled different. You know, accept, A C C. E-P-T, and then you got the one except uh, E-X-C-E-P-T. And uh, depending on which one you're using is the one that you're, it is. I mean, it's the same sound, the same word. It's just how it's spelt, but the meaning's totally different. And it made me think, you know, accept, like accept me, move me out of the way of it, or accept, I'm going to accept things as they are. Uh, it made me realize, I remember when my kids was growing up, Amy went to uh, a trip, and she was gone for probably, I think it was like three weeks. They went to the beach or so, and I had to work, and so they stayed next a week. But anyway, it was three weeks that I was home by myself. Now, it's funny because, you know, I accept the responsibility that 
the bed's got to be made, the house has got to be clean, you clean the bathrooms and the shower and all that stuff. Well, then when she wasn't here, I accepted it. It didn't get done. <laughs> so I just accepted, hey, we're just going to go on and live life or whatever and stuff. As long as I can get it done before they call and gives me a couple hours, I'm okay. But the point is, is, I mean, a shower, you're in a shower, taking a shower, and it's dirty. You're either going to accept it and clean it and say this needs to be clean or just accept it. And a lot of times in our life, we tend to just accept it and move on. And that's what, and I remember that because it was like for three weeks, I didn't do anything. And then when all of a sudden I get a phone call and she decided to come on a little earlier, I'm like, okay, no problem. Because I waited, it took a longer than I projected to clean up and do everything else. And, and it wasn't as easy and just made me realize so often we accept things just because it's the man thing to do. I accept my responsibility. I expect it. But do we really accept it? And sometimes it's challenging. And so that's what we want to do with this, you know, this Zoom here is just to say, hey, look, man, we're all together. We're all here together. Let's look at some products, how it can help us, what we can do, and look at the exception of what we're, our roles are. How can we help one another be a better husband, be a better father, be a better, you know, friend, um, be a better businessman? How can we help each other hold accountable? So uh, with that said, uh, Jim, I know you was talking about uh, some products and stuff that we were talking about. We got some new ones we want to talk about. Does anybody have any questions? Does that sound like this would be pretty cool to do? I mean, you know, or any thoughts? Is this something somebody might need or want to be part of? Do you, you know, and even if you've got somebody that comes in that says, hey, uh, they're not in the business, that's fine. If they want to come in and <laughs> listen to us or whatever, that's fine as well. We're just, just sort of bringing this to do more than just a product lesson, so to speak. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like the idea of doing it, Ronnie and, uh, and Rusty, because, you know, I've been to a couple of triad parties. I've watched some stuff online. I've done the, you know, conference and there's a lot of stuff for women out there. A ton of stuff in this business, as far as this organization for women. And it's geared towards that. And there's, but there's still this, even if it's a 1% of men that are in this business, they need some attention too, because those guys are getting left out there and they're getting forgotten about. And I go by that motto, no man left behind, you know, and if it takes another dude to step up and reach out and grab up that hand of that next of your brother next to you and encourage them to do this business alongside you, then that's what we need to do as men. Um, you know, because there's plenty of women that are going to support the women. You know, there's no problem with that. They can find a woman within this organization real easy. But find a man that's going to step up and, and have your back. You know, there's at least two guys on here that I know of. Let me see who else is here other than Walker. Um, there's two others that I know personally that have my back no matter what. So, and that's a good thing. And it's a good feeling to have as a guy in this business you know, where when I first got started, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was like, well, let me learn about these products. Let me figure out the products and then I'll go do it. Well, let me learn this. Let me learn that. And wanted all these details. And the reality was I was better at talking to people and I didn't have to have all the details about an individual product to make my life and my business a success. I just had to have me being me and had the support of my family saying, go be you doesn't matter what the products are just go be you and everything else will pan itself out rusty i know you've been saying that till you're blue in the face and i just didn't get it for some reason you know uh, fake it till you make it doesn't always work you know <laughs> in a man's world you know because we'll fake it till we fake it until we break it and that ain't good you know so you know this is a nice forum to be able to get together as guys and support one another educate one another on products or sales techniques or what you do rusty you know that could work for somebody else in the business or ronnie or myself you know what we do as as you know role playing or overcoming objections as to products or or you know life situations why somebody can't buy something you know years ago when i was in a sales class there was a there was a guy that got up and he says there's anytime you're talking to somebody there's two different sales that are happening you're selling them on why they should and they're selling you on why they shouldn't. Now, who's going to buy? 
and I'll leave it at that. So, Rusty, what do you got? You know, um, in my going into 18 years full time with Mark, there was three men and one woman that started. That was Mark, Luis Maharis, myself, and Pam Salad that started. So that was that gave us 75 percent. I knew that the that the women would vastly take over the lion's share of the market. But when you go out and present this to yourself, number one, if you become a product of whatever two or three products you are, first of all, you got to take responsibility as a man for whatever the gifts that God gave us. Responsibility when you're a man, it's a particular reason. And if you have a wife and kids, there's another responsibility. But the number one priority in my life, I get it very early every day, but I take responsibility of my health, my, my well-being, my fitness, because I want to be an asset to my wife and kids. I want to be here to lead the way and uh, uh, present something for them to follow. So I become a product of our product. And therefore, when you do that, anytime I encounter somebody during the course of my day, multiple conference calls, multiple freeways, multiple Zooms uh, in the course of my day, and they're buying me before they ever buy the product. They're buying me before they ever buy the opportunity. And when you present yourself in a, in a way that you're confident and you have cr created your own personal testimony, at that point, you're not selling. You are sharing something that as good has happened to you, and therefore people want it. Now, I've been here for a long time. I have a very large organization, but I started out just like you guys, and we've not even got close to the pinnacle of where we're going because we're a brand new company. We have a brand new product line, this just celery. Um, I think it's shipped today or whatever when you get yours. If you'll start a 10-day challenge, and everybody's going to follow your lead. When I first got sick and I started the exercise routine, Nobody in my house exercised except my daughters. They played little sports, but I wanted to take it to the next level. So every day for the last 12 years, I've missed three days in 12 years of, of some form of exercise. And I get up at 4 a.m. every morning, and you all know pretty much my routine and my running. Plus, then I go to work out about 1030. I got Ronnie and a couple other guys who are driving all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina, up here to uh, work out with us. But I told you that to tell you this, not to brag on my workouts. I do this solely for me. I don't go in to do what I can physically do because I'm trying to show off. Now, this is just, I'm in competition with Rusty, but right now I can, I can parade my daughters and wife in here and they'll tell you, we don't have to, I don't have to ask no, none of the three of them to go uh, to take their fitness in their own hands because I've led the way. And, and normally I go back in the afternoon if I'm in town and I do a second workout because I want to be with them to support them. But every single day I get up, I do the same thing and they can count on it. And I led by what? the action, the necessary actions I took. Now I have a, a complete family. We just do this together. And so I, therefore I told you that because I took responsibility of the responsibility God put on me. And number one, he gave me a wonderful wife. I've been with her for Miss Lackey since 1979, which is just over 40 years. And everything I do, I want to do it long. I, I like to make the long-term investments. And that's the same way with our help. And why we want to start this just for men, because you know, here's most guys. You're not able to talk to your spouse or your, your wife or, or, or your significant other about everything that happens during the course of our day because we process things differently. And most of the time, things like that, we just tuck it in, we man up on it, but it still builds up frustration and you just got to have that out. So I think you and Ronnie, by starting this, uh, was a fantastic idea for men to just get on and voice whatever your concerns are. It don't have to be about it works or a product or your health. It's just about us guys hanging out together to give each other that moral support, just like the women do, that moral support. And you know, all I got to do is message this guy, pick up the phone and call him. But therefore, as a man, you and if you have a wife and kids, you're still by God responsible. It is your responsibility. You've been given a gift to take care of. Number one is your health. If you're not taking your uh, well uh, care of your physical fitness, I, do, you know, I think that has to be the number one priority in your life because you cannot effectively take care of your wife and your kids. And therefore, if you're if you're sick, and I know I'm talking about my own personal experience, when I was sick and I went to 750 pounds, and I was doing the medical treatment, my poor wife had to wipe my ass. She had to uh, um, she had to bathe me. She had to feed me. She done everything for me for several years. My wife should not have never had to do that because I was chasing the money. That's why I love direct sales because I have the ability to to just give myself a raise in any any given day but I was chasing the money because we were very poor and I didn't want to be poor no more. So I stepped up and just chased the money. Then I ended up having almost spent everything I'd ever made to get my health back. That's why I live by the four principles. God is always first. Family's always second. Fitness is always third. Those three happen every day. Those are non-negotiable. I don't worry about the money. It's a byproduct of doing the right things. And therefore I take the responsibility, but I shoulder the load in this family 
monetarily, physically, everything, it, it goes down. If you want to get in the fight with what, what my responsibilities are, because see, God gave you this body and he gave you the responsibility of taking care of it. And if you don't take care of your physical health, you'll always have mental issues. You'll always tuck it in, but we still have to have a place where men can come in and voice your opinion. So what we want to do is put you in a position to have a physical well-being, well-being, not not and to become an asset to your family or to your environment, not not a liability. And therefore, the more you don't take care of yourself, that's why I'm up early every day. I have to get up because I don't. <laughs> I promise you, I don't ever want to go back to where I was. You know, you're being grossly obese and ungodly sick. I don't ever want to go back there. And therefore, I get up and I, take, I become responsible for it every single day. And I know if I, if I take a day off, this is what I know and don't take a day off. Poverty, poverty, don't ever take a day off. And when you, when you have poverty, you first have poverty of the mind. Disease, don't ever take a day off. When I was sick, that stuff never took a day off. It fought me 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week for years. And I had to get the hand up on it. And I'm just very thankful. And I'm, I live in this attitude of gratitude. Every morning I get to get up and I get to go take care of myself. I get to do that because the, my why is so large. Because I never use my kids or my wife as an excuse to why not. I use them as a reason why I've done it. And if you truly a man, if you have children or a spouse, and you're not getting your sorry ass out of the bed early every morning and doing the necessary things a man should do to take care of his family, what did God say that was uh, he was worse than the infidel? I don't really know what an infidel was, but I sure don't want to be worse than one of those guys, if you know what I mean. So it is our, we've been given a, a responsibility to take care of us, number one, whether we just need to get together and talk, shoot the breeze, just to blow off some steam for a couple minutes or whatever we need to do to support each other so you don't have to tuck all that in to create that undue stress that causes all kinds of physical, and it, and all kinds, and it causes frustrations in the family. The mom and daddy don't get along. That totally affects the kids. And I just, and I thought it was a great idea that you and Ronnie put this thing just for men together. But we need to get things in a priority mode and get it in a particular order that just flows, the perpetual flow starts to just go. And therefore, you're going to become more productive. When you become more productive in your health and people see that you're out setting the pace, they don't make a rat's ass. Who does what in my family? I'm talking outside of my household or, or what's going on in my community. Those non-negotiables are our priorities. There, you can't negotiate me out of not getting it done every single day, seven days a week. And I ain't telling you to do it like I do. If you if you're not a person that's doing it, if you, if you get started a couple days a week or three or four days a week, just grow into it. So we, I wanted to uh, uh, participate in this so we can help men just to grow every single day, grow into the next level. You don't have to go gangbusters all at once. Grow into where you are and watch the, the small victories every single day compounded over time. It's going to create you a big victory. But what are you doing? You're starting to create that legendary legacy. You're going to get feet to your legacy. It becomes legendary. And a legacy will never become legendary unless the man, God put the man in the head of the household. And that don't mean you, you rule with an iron fist. No, no. You, you, should, you should listen twice as much as you talk and, and give people direct, and not responses, but answers. Anybody can respond really quick, but then you give them a, a thought out answer. And, and when you become confident in yourself, you'll watch your wife and you watch your kids become very confident in who they are and you'll start to set the tone. And next thing you'll create this synergy and we start to do this thing together. That's your role as a, your God given talent role and responsibility. If you know what responsibility is, go look for it. And you know, the, uh, and I often said, I got some girls in our organization that make 40, $50,000 a month and it really hurt their husband's feelings. And I had to, I got a call from Mr. Pentecost once and I had to go see a couple guys because their wives really took it to the next level because they, they were just tired of being behind the eight ball. And they really went after it because this compensation is the strongest in the industry. It pays infinite width and infinite death. If you're not in it works, that's okay. Just do what you love to do. I mean, if you ever wanted to do it. But I, and when they got started, I went up and I, I talked to the guys, kind of like we're doing tonight. And they said, well, we were used to bringing in <laughs> the money, carrying the load, this, that, and the other. I said, so your feelings are hurt because your wife makes more money than you do? Is that what I'm hearing? I said, so that, that's very little boyish. So if she's doing that well, and I knew they were, what would happen if you would really man up and become a real man and go and apply that bitching uh, uh, thing that you're doing? And, and apply, bitching means nothing but barking because the dog, I have some, I have some AKC registered dogs. And I said, if you were to and support her in that manner, just think how much further you could get down the line. If every day you got up and made the same kind of contribution to doing something positive and making things happen, 
you start crying like a little girl. And number one, you got to come what responsible for your health. Right now you're puffing, you're drinking, you're doing all that other silly shit, and you need to just cut that off because. Uh, and, and bottom line, you ease out of that. It, it, it never, you, you can create an addiction with anything. So I just changed those old bad habits I used to have that, that we were all addicted to, like the refrigerator and all that other stuff. I slowly, over the course of time, started to change because I wanted my time to compound itself. And anytime, you, whatever you're going to do, it's going to compound itself, whether it's negative or positive. And with this support group, if we, we realize what our priorities are, and every single day you get up just a few minutes earlier, start that discipline, and all of a sudden you're going to create a desire, you're going to create a hunger, and then it becomes a habit, and then it becomes an addiction. And once you become addicted to being healthy and you become addicted to be successful, it's just a, how big is your dreams? Where do you want it to go? But it all comes into putting your priorities. I write them down every day. I can show you. I've already started on tomorrow's plan of action here. It's the things we're going, Rob and I are going to accomplish tomorrow, but everything on that page is a priority. It is not just, oh, I hope it'll get, no, no, no. It's a particular time frame priority. Like if you went to work the job, you punched in, you had to have this much done by 10 o'clock, by 12 o'clock. That's exactly how I run this business. And I like to get up very early so I can get my day normally knocked out before lunch. And then I've got stuff I can add to it and, and, and to compound the effect. And once the compounded effect kicks into what you're doing, I don't care if it's your health, your relationship, or your business. You'll begin to start to live life like, like you deserve to live it, but it's your responsibility as a man. If you got two testicles between your legs, you were born with that testosterone, you were given a gift, and you've got to take care of the gift, and, it, and, and it's your job to step up and step out and be the head of the home. And that don't mean a rule with an iron fist or, or talk. And, you know, I was a preacher son, and Jim, you were as well. And I've seen guys take that to the next level, and they just hide behind religion and all that other silly mess. Uh, and, and think they're just uh, God's gift. No, no, no. It's your job and your responsibility to lead your family, lead by example. And I had a lady the other day, she said, my kids won't listen. I said, hell, I don't listen to you neither. She said, why not? I said, because all you do is talk at those children, but they're doing what you do, not what you say do. And so by all the years I've, I've had, been with Miss Lackey for 40 years and, and my daughters are grown, but they're still daddy's girls. Every single day, if I want my kids to do something different, I'm going to go do it first. I'm going to lead them by example because you're going to model and mirror everything that you see done and monkey see, monkey do. And, uh, you know, that little rhyme or little fable back in the first grade. And the bottom line, if I want them to do something different, I'm going to do something different. I'm not going to talk the action. I have to take the action. And here I'm getting ready to go into my 18th year, taking the necessary actions to go to the next level. And you know what? That has really uh, put us to the real next level. Uh, of making things happen to where we own our time uh, with our family. And I don't, uh, I haven't missed anything else with my wife and kids. I've been a full-time daddy, but there are certain things that are non-negotiables. I step up the plate every single day to do what? To take the necessary action. Is my days great every day? No, they're not. I have hard days like the rest of you, but you know what? I will get up and fight like hell. Do you know why? Because it's my responsibility to take care of my health, take care of my wife and take care of my kids. Is that pretty what you're looking for, Jim? All right, Ronnie. Uh, that's and that's the cool thing about it. And just like I'm, you know, a little bit about uh, my background, what I've, how I got into the business, and sort of explains a little bit of why I'm really passionate about helping others. Is uh, uh, I just uh, was a year ago. I just turned fifty, and uh, I hadn't seen Rusty in probably ten years. Uh, and uh, we were looking at it works years ago, and I knew that he, uh, I think at that time, he was still, you know, 400 pounds and was, you know, working on his journey. And uh, anyway, so another opportunity came around where I was able to reach out to him. He was going to meet me and a friend of mine and talk about a product. And one thing I do know about Rusty is that he's pretty much upfront honest. If it's, if it's a yes, it's a yes. If it's a no, it's a no. It's not, you know, candy cut it and everything like that. And, you know, with business, the guy asked me about, he wants somebody to tell him exactly would this work for uh, network marketing, a product that he was working on. And uh, I said, well, I don't know, but I know a guy that'll tell you yes or no and, uh, and then help you figure out what you need to do. So we met, he walked by me. I didn't even recognize him. And uh, so as we started talking, um, uh, he was asking about, you know, me and what I was doing. And I told him, you know, doing this, I said, I need to start looking. You talked about his coffee. 
uh, that he was using. And I said, they said, you need to try some of this. I said, yeah, I will, I will. And uh, that's as far as it went. He didn't push the business over, but he did say one thing. He said, well, he said, when you're ready to be an asset uh, to your family, not a liability, call me. And that's man to man there. I mean, that's not candy code. That's just saying, look, man, he knows I was playing around. He knows by looking at me, you know, I was close to 400 pounds. And that's just what it was. Now, the crazy thing about it is uh, uh, made me think about things. So as I'm getting down the next day, Wilmington to deliver, uh, deliver tea to these uh, coffee shops, I turned around and uh, on the way back, I heard a uh, pastor yeah. on the radio and he made a comment. He said, I've never seen a dead man cash a check. And it hit me so hard because I knew I had to do something in my life. If I was going to be here for my family or be for work or do anything. And uh, an, illustration, an illustration came to mind about if you've ever been on an airplane, and the first thing it does, it drops down that mask in front of you. First thing they tell you is make sure you put that on you before you put it on others because you can't help others if it's not on you. And that's the first thing you got to do. Well, that illustration came. I called my wife that night on my way back, and I said, hey, I'm sorry. You know, just told her, man, I've got to do something. I called Rusty that night as well, and I said, hey, man, can you meet with me? And I want to get some of that coffee and I need to start doing something. He said, absolutely. So I met with him the next day and got some coffee from him. And we started doing it. My wife did it first. She lost six pounds in the first, you know, six days. I did it. I lost 12 pounds in my first month. Energy like crazy. Started making a difference. <clears throat> and uh, so next thing I know, it started changing our life. We started making a little bit of money. Uh, one thing led to another within a year's time. Uh, I've lost over 30 pounds. My wife's lost about 10, about 15 or so. So there's almost 30, 40 pounds right in there. Uh, just maintaining what we're doing now, just using the products. What Rusty didn't realize was the month before that, uh, we got eviction about the house that they were going to foreclose on the house. Now I worked for myself. I was doing all kinds of side jobs, trying to do whatever could come in to make a payment. And I told him, I said, man, if I can make four or $500, I'd, I'd be towards the house. I, I'd be tickled to death. And, uh, well, so now within a year's time with it works, uh, <clears throat> I have personally lost, uh, almost 45 pounds and energy like freaking crazy. Our house, not only did we get the foreclosure back, got some things caught up on it to make it come back, but now that it works is paying our house payment. And now we're saving up to buy a car and to do these other things. One thing I realize is this, I'm 51 now. Normally people 50 or older, you're throwing in the towel. You've got more reasons of not doing anything. I decided I wanted to be there for my kids. I wanted to continue living longer and I had to do something. And ever since I did, it has changed my life because I've struggled with weight for years. And like I said, when I started, I was almost, I was close to, I was, about four by three ninety over three ninety when I started this journey, and the crazy thing about it is that it's not a diet; it's a lifestyle. But the vision, and it's one thing that I thank Rusty for, because he would coach me, he would teach me things, he'd bring all this stuff about. Look at this video, watch this video, listen to this guy. It all starts here in your mind, and that was the biggest challenge I have had is in my mind making making sure that I maintain it and I stayed with it. And so that's why we are so serious about helping anybody in any way we can, because I'm telling you, never saw a dead man cash a check. When you look at that, it's done, you're done. And I know several people in this last year journey, I've been to several funerals. I've been to two people that have had strokes and a heart attack. And 90% of all that could have been prevented. And that's what I realized. A lot of stuff is right here at us, but we don't know. And I'm going to do everything I can to share it. Now, whether they accept it, that's not my job. 
My job is not to pour stuff down somebody's throat and all that stuff. My job is just to say, hey, here's where I was. How can I help you? This is what's working for me. How can I help you? And so that's what we want to do because believe you me, once your health starts getting in shape, <laughs> your outlook at life and everything, the finances starts coming in. Last Friday, we just closed up the tea business. <laughs> the craziest thing. I'm struggling going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We own the key company. We just turned around and closed it up. That Saturday, we had a distributor come in, and in one day, she got three into uh, three little customers just like that. I was on the phone with her all day long. I was sitting there going, this is crazy when you put time into this thing. <laughs> now, I didn't say that loud for us to hear me until I said it today when I was talking to Daryl, he heard me and he's like, Oh, so what did you say? You know, but the point is this, we all are stubborn bottom line. That's the way God made us because you got to be stubborn to put up with women. Now I say that cause my wife is at Walmart or shopping or whatever. And I am the man <laughs> of this house until she gets home. But anyway, uh, but the point is, is, is the fact is let's be real. If we need help in certain areas, ask for it. But if somebody gives you the stuff to do, do it. And that's like I told Rusty, man, I need help. He said, all right, I'm going to give you things. But that's part of it. If I chose not to do it, then did he really give me the help? Did I really get the help? That's why I said it's a, it's a whole big circle. And so that's why we're wanting to do this. I'm excited about the Zoom. Uh, and I'll shoot my phone number out to everybody. Uh, put in your phone if you got a question or anything. You want to invite people on. Uh, like I said, Rusty uh, is letting us use his Zoom right now for this as we build this thing. Uh, and uh, I appreciate you, Rusty, doing that. And, you know, there's going to be things that Rusty's sending me. We'll put a, uh, a thread with all this stuff so that people can, uh, you know, be in the same messenger thing so that we'll come up with a name, whatever we want to do. And then that way we'll do is just keep in touch, throw things out if somebody's got a – uh, somebody talked about a certain topic is, man, you need to check this out. Look at the stuff. When we send it out, look at it, because I'm telling you, a lot of this stuff is exactly what you need at the time. When you're praying, Lord, help me, he sends people for reasons. It's up to us to accept it. So uh, anyway, that's my story. So Rusty, anybody else uh, that hadn't talked, anybody else got any questions? Ronnie, you said something the other day. How many years did you do it your way? <laughs> he was we was talking about the weights and stuff, and Steve goes, Well, that I asked him, I said, What's the right way of doing this? And he showed me and I said, Okay. He said, You asked about the right way of doing it. I said, Well, I've been doing it fifty one years my way, which has obviously been the wrong way. <laughs> I said, Now I want to learn how to do it the right way. And uh uh that's exactly where I'm at. I mean, you know, I did it my way for so many years and look where it got me. So I'm excited about the new 50 plus years coming. Yeah. Well, you know, um, they just put the challenge out for the new salary. And um, I've never been as excited about healing my body on the inside. Everybody knows I had a, a few uh, liver issues uh, due to what happened in the past and the way this stuff is going to cleanse it. You know, uh, how many of you guys want to take this challenge with us with corporate uh, this salary, I, the more I read about it, the more excited I'm being. And, you know, I, salary in my life ain't never tasted good till recently. When I found out the benefits of it, even though uh, my stuff should be here tomorrow or the next day, I've been eating celery like uh, like a rabbit. And I've been documenting how I feel after the fact. So now that I can take a little scoop and put in eight ounces of water and get a better benefit than eating the actual celery, I'm more excited. But for the, for the benefit, there's not one human being on earth or especially in America, there should be in the next 24 months. If you guys make up your mind, there should be no people that, that feel bad or sick in your, your sphere of influence for the benefit of this one product. And by the way, we're the only company in the world to have this particular product right now. It is a first market product and it is proprietary and w go figure. <laughs> celery has been in our, around our, us most of our lives. Most of us, it was celery here before we got here and something in plain sight, they will have the effect that that stuff will have on you. I think everybody needs to do it. And there's another preventative measure of being responsible to take care of you so you can effectively take care of your, your wife and your ch children or your, your, your families. And how many other guys do we know that we want to get them on this challenge with us 
because I don't know one man uh, at all that don't like to, to have a challenge that he can work toward. But now we've come collectively together as an organization. Now we're kind of unified and we take this challenge together. And that challenge is nothing more for each of us to support each other on whatever level it is we need to support each other. But the one thing about it, we're going to be the healthiest group of uh, just for men guys that they've ever seen. I promise you that. Mm. All righty, guys. Anybody got any questions, comments? And does uh, add anything to it? Yes. So does nine o'clock. Know how to Monday? get in? Go ahead. Does everybody? Does everybody know how to get into their back office that's on here? I don't know how new everybody is. Does yeah. everybody know how to do that? Does everybody know how to log in to their website and sign up a customer or a distributor? Now, one thing I want to say, this has happened just to me yesterday, a new distributor. They sent somebody to the website and was talking about ordering a product. Uh, and uh, when it gets in there, it says, do you want, to, you want to just order a product or become a little customer? Well, they were thinking they were just going to order a product and try it out. So they went ahead and signed up as a retailer. Well, they paid full price, but they thought they were just going to do it. That meant they could do it one time, try it, and then if they wanted to be a loyal customer later. Well, what that did, that didn't count for that person's loyal customer. That counted as a retailer. So that's the other thing. If you're looking for loyal customers to qualify and all that, you got to make sure they're loyal customers. So they now realize oh, you should have went to the other thing. So the website asked the question, but sometimes we don't answer it or the right way. So that's another thing. Right. Make sure that you let your people know if they're going to be a loyal customer, they need to follow through with loyal customer, not the retail, because the computer, they're only going to put it whichever way they do it. And that's one thing that could cause somebody from uh, getting a $100 free product. Uh, I'm actually working with a girl now on that. <clears throat> so that they can get that corrected because <clears throat> they need to make sure that goes in that way. There's a lot of good training videos on um, under, I believe it's resources on the, uh, oh shoot, what's that? What's that other? The app. Oh, the, the uh, Connect. Connect app. Yep. I don't know. I lost my mind for a minute there. So, lack of oxygen up here in the mountains. <laughs> 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 Um, it's rare air, isn't it? That's real rare. It's, yeah. it's not as blood red. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good training videos. So any guys that are new in here that haven't watched all those videos, I encourage you, go back and watch them all. It's free. You have the Connects app. Hopefully you've downloaded it onto your phone. Just log into your own app. Go to resources on there and start watching the videos. There's multiple videos per day that you can get in there, and it will give you – you know, we don't know what we don't know because we don't know it. And sometimes we just need to hear it or see it. Then all of a sudden we do know what we didn't know. And now we can be a better person or a better, you know, distributor because of it or a better helper to the next guy down the line because of what we found out. So, you know, I know that I know a good bit. Rusty knows a lot. Um, uh, Ronnie knows a lot. I don't know who the guy in the gray shirt is with his hand on his head like this. Because it just says iPhone, but I don't know who he is. But I assume Ronnie knows him, and then I don't know John. I think I know Ed because I think he got in through Pamela. But and I definitely know Walker because he lives here. Um, <laughs> but I know the three of us, you know, that have been talking tonight. We know a good bit, and um, yeah, I, I see your comment, Ed. You can't wait for the celery challenge. That's awesome. Um, so at any rate, if you reach out to one of us if you've got questions or reach out to whoever your your sponsor was um but then listen to what it is they have to tell you because they have good information and if you don't understand re-ask a different question you know um because there's a lot of information out there especially when you get started it's a little overwhelming and i can appreciate that it's almost like you know giving a drowning man a glass of water to drink um <laughs> so not real effective sometimes so you just got to give them a hand out of the out of the water out of the pool first, 
and give them a towel to dry off and then hand them something to drink later. Um, so at any rate, if you guys got questions, reach out to us. We'll be happy to help you guys out as best we can, or we can at least point you in the right direction or to someone who can help you out. If we don't know the answer, we'll find it. So I know, you know, that's been helpful to me in the past, you know, six, eight months. So, yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Well, this clicked close to 10, but, uh, yeah, so Mondays at 9, we'll be doing this again. We'll be sending out a, a, a reminder, all the stuff with it. And if you, like I said, know anybody, whether they're whether it works or not, they just want to learn about some of the products and you're talking about some. <clears throat> and if you got ahead before next Monday and there's a few products you're questioning about, want to learn more about it, let us know how this can work with men or whatever. And, um, uh, you know, we'll get people on here. And eventually, it, once it grows, we're going to have speakers on here that can help us um, with exactly products and everything else and just help us any way we can. So. Yeah. Right on. Thanks, guys. All right, guys. Y'all have a good night, and we'll talk soon. All right. Good night. Appreciate it.